good rolls or what? Am I, like my favorite was the ladybug roll came with strawberries. It was squid. I'm still stuck on squid. Yeah, you but never only, had, but I've had octopus fried. You feel me? Oh, no. But like calamari. Yeah, cal- yeah, fried calamari. That's just you know, good. It's yeah, it is. Yeah. But never squid though. Have you ever had dim sum? That's what calamari is. I know, yeah, yeah, it's squid. Yeah. yeah. Oh, for real? It's fried, it's yeah, it's just fried. It's, or, yeah. I mean, sometimes they put octopus in that, okay. hope, but for the most part, squid. Sheesh. Mm-hmm. Look at that. You ever been to one the of rings, those? Um, the rings are, yeah, that's squid. Fuck, I have had it then. That's just good. And it is good. Okay. <laughs> okay. Look you learn you. something every there year. There you go. So <laughs> have y'all ever been to that, uh, like, the Korean barbecue where you have to cook it yourself? No. Mm. That's the first time I had squid or octopus. I was like shocked. Damn, I was like, I got to cook. Yeah. yeah, I was like, they had this table where it's like a pit in the center. And I was like, okay, like, I was, we were picking what we wanted. I was like, yeah, I want, I'll try this. I had never been there. And I don't know where they bring us all this raw meat. And I'm like, I. that don't look good. That don't look cook. <laughs> <laughs> and then homegirl, she's just like, no, look, and turns on the fire. And I was like, what the fuck? I got to oh, pay damn. to cook my own food. Your like, own food? how do I know I'm cooking home. it right? You know, like, was it good though? For I, I didn't get food poisoning. Okay, okay so well, yeah, that's you know, there you so go. I know, I know how cooked. good. Yeah, yeah. Because <laughs> no, I would have been pissed if I gave myself yeah. food poisoning. <laughs> that's a loophole right there. And you bought it. <laughs> yeah, real, I paid for, for the whole experience. That is that's funny, such a man. scam, bro. <laughs> that is fucking hilarious, man. Have you had a dim sum? Mm-mm. That shit. I've been telling everybody about it because me and my uh, Isabel, we just started eating, and that shit is what is fire. Di- what is dim sum? What is it? It's like uh, like the where they put like the entree in the center and they rotate, but it's like oh, yeah, shareable you did, food. You did tell me about oh. like they'll have like like the I don't even know what all the foods are, but she found it through TikTok. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. I've never been though. My stepmom, my well, my ex stepmom was Korean, so I mainly just eat Korean food to this okay. day. Oh, sure. Um, as far as Asian goes mm-hmm. and sushi, um, yeah, we go to the Korean market separately from H E B. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. That's like us. Like we we'd go to H E B and then we'd go to Fiesta. Yeah. <laughs> you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Shout out pretty Fiesta. Much. I said last time I was in Fiesta I saw like four birds just flying around Damn. on like aisle seven. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> like you know what I'm saying? Yeah. They let them do what they want. <laughs> exactly. That's where they had all the uh the lobster too, like in the tank or the mm. uh, you know. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. It'd be like going to the freaking uh, aquarium Man. while your parents were grocery shopping. <laughs> 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 yeah. Killing two birds with one stone. <laughs> yeah. And it's free. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. 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 You ain't gotta touch exactly. it, take it home. We ain't gonna That's eat right. it. So. <laughs> yeah. Man, how's everybody doing tonight? We are doing well, thank you. Yeah, I'm doing all right, Mr. Nicholas. Nasty ass beer. Uh, I'm sorry, <laughs> I haven't drank gross. beer in forever. I was just <laughs> feeling impulsive. I was having a frustrating. It's been a long day. Uh, There's yeah, been so yeah, much yeah, going yeah, on. Yeah. Like, no, nah, I feel you. <sighs> but you, it is Tuesday, so that means it's not even halfway through the week. I know, but so this cannot be the worst. But I'm just kidding. We do get a little break after this before the show, so that's there cool. you go. Two days, exactly. Yeah, we we've been recording like, like this crazy. is our third in a row, bro. I mm-hmm. think, Damn. Mm-hmm. and then we still have two more this week. Yeah, yeah, we have like five recordings this week. <laughs> I kind of <laughs> fucked that, so I'm sorry, guys. Yeah, it's cool, Damn, it's but cool. we're going out with the band because like we've been like having like nothing but big artists, mm-hmm. you know. So we're just continuing that, just going hard, but we still can until we want to take that break and just you know. Try to yeah. end the season. Holidays are right around the corner. Exactly. So. I can't Nobody wait for da- I can't wait for Thanksgiving. I'm excited for Thanksgiving. Oh, yeah. I'm so ready. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm yeah. preparing. I've had like unfortunate Thanksgiving here and there. There was one Thanksgiving I spent in jail, and then oh, last year we fuck. got COVID. Damn. And yeah, it's been rough. So I'm like looking for. I just want to eat. I just want to eat fuck. food. You know. So it's like, man. Usually Thanksgiving is my favorite time of year, except one year my cat was dying. Oh, and I, had, I, I was living in San Marcos, and I oh. had to drive to San Antonio, and I had to run back. I, not in jail, but yeah, <clears throat> damn, I felt similar. I feel bad. All my Thanksgivings have been, been amazing. Wonderful. <laughs> I'm happy for after. you. <laughs> As it should be. <laughs> yeah. As it should be. Thanksgiving is my favorite holiday, so. For real. For real. Hall- like, Halloween <clears throat> is mine. It should uh, be New Year's. That's my birthday, but oh, oh really? That's my daughter's mm-hmm. birthday too. Really? Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I always tell her save the best for last. Hey, okay. <laughs> At the end of it the is, year, it's my favorite. Uh, it should be my favorite day, but I like to eat more than I like to drink. So mm. I feel that. Mm-hmm. There we are. I'm trying to get into the Christmas spirit this year because I've always been like a sort of like a 
what is it called? What's Grinch. the yeah Grinch? You know, <laughs> I had bad Christmases growing up, but over the years, I'm like, okay, and I have a little bit more control over my Christmases. <laughs> yeah. You know, like yeah. Yeah. <laughs> traumatic experiences, I can push that to the side and you know, just bottle it up and toss it. You know, it ain't Maybe gonna come back. Maybe you should like start trying some summer holidays because right? the winter ones don't seem to be working. Do Christmas in July? <laughs> yeah, I haven't had that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yo, because <laughs> Fourth of July is out of there. <laughs> yeah. Well, you didn't get me a gift, sir. Um, I would like. Um, dun, dun, dun. I got you know. Christmas. I got, I'm going all out for Christmas okay, this year. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Y'all. T- y'all. We should do like a secret Santa for the IDK network. I'm down for that. We did that one year, like a. Uh, what's it called when everybody like gets together for like a secret Santa and like yeah. it was a Christmas party, you know. Yeah. Mm. Everybody blacked out, but we had all these badass gifts and all this amazing food that okay. everybody brought. Everybody blacked okay. out. Yeah, it was fun. It was definitely fun. Last time we threw a party, so. I'm trying to. We'll, we'll have to do a IDK event. I'm trying to be yeah. there. I'm trying to be there. You got to come south, though. <sighs> what part of San Antonio do you stay? We live in Converse, so mm-hmm. like northeast. Mm-hmm. Okay, mm-hmm. okay. Mm-hmm. I think I've only been around the area where it's kind of like north because I've never gone further south. you never been downtown? You ever walk? River work, yes, but that's yeah. like there and back. I never mm. really got to like venture around, you know. Mm. I feel you. River walk is pretty much all all we have. Yeah, that's, yeah. And that's basically it. Anyway, I got on that uh, that dinner tower yeah. at the very top. What is yeah. it called? Tower uh, of America. Yes, mm-hmm. yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Have I feel like if you drink up there because we hung out at the bar, yeah. you get dizzy. Yeah. <clears throat> Do you actually like living in San Antonio though? Are you born and raised? I'm born and raised. Okay. But I spent the last seven years in Sam, well, Austin, San Marcos. Okay. okay. Moving back, mm, I could live uh, uh, other places. Okay. Um, <clears throat> it's nice to have, you know, be around family, but I think with being 26 and mm. I'm in this weird part of my life, it's hard to not feel nostal- like nostalgic. Yeah. You know, like we dry- Sean and I have known each other since sixth grade and. <laughs> We drive past like our middle school and our high oh. school, and it's just it's difficult to. Not look reality back. starts to get a little blurred there, mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. Um, it also makes me w- nervous. Like I'm never gonna live anywhere else. <laughs> yeah. I don't want that to be the case. Um, but it's cool. Yeah, it's cool for now. I feel like every every time I talk to someone from San Antonio, <laughs> they be like, oh, "San Antonio, it doesn't have shit. We're tired of living here." Yeah, it's. I've definitely found it a harder time. Like. Getting shows mm. or like meeting people in the music industry. Mm. Um, Isn't it supposed to be like the next like Hollywood or they're gonna shoot all the movies there? That's Austin, baby. Oh. Yeah, I feel it's like that's now. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. I had somebody once tell me from San Antonio, I was like, yeah, sometimes it's gonna be a lot better. We're doing all this construction, they're gonna shoot all the movies here. And I was well, like, the okay. The construction is correct, but yeah. I don't know about <laughs> the movies. That's about <laughs> everywhere in, all, in Texas, I guess. Yeah. You know? <laughs> I don't know about anything else. No, I don't know. Midnight, yeah, yeah, I like you know Midnight what? Film. Tell them to write me back. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I'm trying to get in contact with them. Actually, we're supposed to have the owner on the show, but we yeah. just haven't right. planned. So I will let you know. Yeah, you show when you up talk and just to be him, like, hey, be like, can you reply to Shan Siona, please? Because yeah. she's been trying to perform. Or if y'all get a show, just put me on. Hey, hey we'll have to throw a show there at some point until Jay. Have yeah. you have you ever actually been? Damn. Okay. No. Now I moved back to San Antonio about a year ago. But like, it was during the pandemic and everything, you know, and I'm I'm like 67 inside, y'all. So yeah. I don't I I one when <laughs> when the sun goes down and it gets dark. Yeah, these days I like to be at home unless I'm performing or you know I prepared that day for it. You will not catch me out. No. You will not. You yeah. will not. Um, safe safety, I guess. I just drink. Living in San Marcos and working around San Marcos mm-hmm. is very dangerous. Yeah. And for weight gain, for alcoholism, for all of it, um, because you don't have to spend money, and people it's just like cheap. to get you it's like wasted. Dirt cheap. Yeah. There. We used to yeah. go out there, but it was always scary because like we're driving all the way to San Marcos mm. to get fucked up, like mm-hmm. getting get back is like, up, and you get fucked up, and uh, I'm tired of throwing up. Yeah, <laughs> they know? have freaking just, quarter beers yeah. on one night. I'm like, that is dangerous. Quarter, like, quarter dos equis. It's not yes. even like trash beers. No, it's like, like they're giving that shit away. Yes. It's like, just come get fucked up. At trash, they have $2 you call it, and they're like this big. Yeah. You call it. Oof. Yeah. On a Tuesday. Hey, we may need to take yeah, you a trip. need to go down there. <laughs> I've, I've already paid my dues for the square. I'm a little scared to go back at this point. I yeah. <laughs> I'm, I, it's scary. I just have PTSD these days. Yeah. You say you're tired of throwing up. Yeah, and, and feeling dizzy or like <laughs> hungover. You know, yeah, it's trying to close your eyes and you feel like you're about to fall off a cliff. Yeah, I haven't felt that in forever. Where I close mm. my eyes and just like. <laughs> and it, it, I always tell Mario the funny thing is I drink a lot. Like I drink like dark liquor, right? Tequila as well. Mm. Uh, I've never had a hangover. 
never. That's crazy. I blacked out one time and woke up just fine. Oh my you know, God. Woke up you just drink fine. water in between? Oh, yeah. I drink oh, okay, a, I a lot why. of water just during the day, yeah. just in general. But yeah, like I fell asleep in the tub like before. Like Damn. it almost like flooded my apartment being so drunk. <laughs> oh uh, but I woke up, shit. Uh, <laughs> Fine. And, and not, walked to work the next day. Sick. I'm just like, it's whatever. You know, oh what challenge gosh. accepted. I'm gonna get you fucked up. <laughs> hey, <laughs> hey, 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 I'll take the challenge. We gotta film it too, bro. We gotta Damn. film it. Man. It's a mug bang except we're getting <laughs> fucked up. <laughs> <laughs> Mug yeah. bang with alcohol. Hey, yeah, hey, I'm down, man. I'm yeah. down. We didn't even play the intro or nothing. Well, we're getting there. We're gonna pull a Joe Bunny today. Okay, actually. let's do it. Then, man. I mean, let's this, is, this is how our gla- organic the conversations roll. You know, so yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, yes. Thanks. I think I'm easy to talk to. Yeah, no, I, for sure. it definitely makes it easier, especially when we don't have to drink. Yes. But today, mm. I kind of have to. I know you got pulled over. <sighs> It's another Tuesday. Another, another Tuesday. <laughs> another Tuesday, guys. <laughs> but we're here. Being we're brown here. in the hills, man. That's how it goes. But we're here, and uh, yeah, it's uh, I don't know, that's perfect. I am Mario from the South Side. I am sitting here with my co host. I am a little confused and trying to figure out which way I'm going to go with this conversation. So go ahead and introduce <laughs> yourself, bro. <laughs> Neighborhood Nick, man. I am here with my brother Mario, man. Um, Ready to ready to get it in? Yeah, we have another special guest today. This is Shannon Siona. Am I saying that correctly? You are saying it correctly. Thank okay. you for saying yeah. it correctly. I, to be, I was like so nervous. I was like, man, like watching me like Siona and I'm like butchering and no. shit. You know, I was like, I'm big on trying to pronounce things correctly because my last name, like people always try and I never expect mm. them to like get it right and it's frustrating. So I can only imagine. <laughs> that was me. Mind- well, my, my last name is Sicilian and black. So that oh, also yeah. is... People get it mixed up all the time, but it is Siona. I've gotten Sion, Siona. I like it. Uh, and it's really just the root word of Shannon, so it's really just Shannon, Shannon. So, okay. Yeah, right. just the Irish root word of it. That's live. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. And coming from San Antonio. Coming from San Antonio, two and zero countdown what city. What does it call it uh, when it's like S S S S S S? Fucking. I stopped doing English literature yeah. a long time oh, ago. I know, I know alliteration. Yeah, it's yeah. an alliteration. Mm. Hey, Shannon Siona from San Antonio. Oh, I've, been out, I've been out of school since 2009, bro. I definitely don't remember, Damn. bro. I know. Damn. You <laughs> me? Yeah, I know. I'm like, oh. <laughs> you hit me with the Kevin Hart. <laughs> she hit me For with real. the Kevin Hart shit, bro. You got to give her that look. <laughs> hey, I just turned 30. Hey, you feel me? Nice. Like, don't make it like I'm like 42. <laughs> she said, damn. I'm like, <laughs> well, you didn't specify what school. Like, you right. You right. You right. You right. <laughs> High school. You know? Graduated in 2009. <laughs> I thought you just meant completion. Yeah. <laughs> like, damn. <Yeah. laughs> she hit me with that shit. Perfect. I'm like, oh, man, it hurt my, my soul. Fault, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. No judgment here. Yeah. So, Mrs. Siona, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself for those listening and watching that may be unfamiliar with yourself? Yes, my name is Shannon Siona. I'm a 26-year-old from San Antonio, Texas. I'm a neo soul funk singer. For those who don't know what that is, I like to say I am Motown meeting Mother Nature. Um... Yeah, I sing Neo Soul Funk. I've been singing my my entire life, really. Um, I started professionally with Shannon Siona uh, in 2015. Been rocking it ever since. Uh, my first project that I ever released was called The Siona Project. Back in 2015, I have one copy left. Everything mm-hmm. else got destroyed. Oh, so, damn. yeah. That sucks. Number one hurt? rule, don't yeah. mix personal and professional. Uh, and, uh, and if you okay. pay in, We've all been and there. And if you pay in cash, get receipts. Okay. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Unfortunate. Um, I'm sorry. Almost asked. But and I was you know, like, it is what it is. Yeah. It, you know, you learn everything. You gotta thug it out and keep it moving. Yeah. You know, mm. uh, money will always come back. Uh, mm-hmm. So I did the Siona project. You want me to go into a whole spiel or you want, you want me to stop and take Give us what you like. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm literally like the notebook no, right no, now. Go, so. go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> All right. So uh, after 2015, I did the Siona project. Um, and then I started performing around San Marcos uh, in Dallas. I took mm, a few years off in 16 and 17 after my manager – passed away oh wow I'm sorry um thank you uh so I had to like handle that (laughs) handle Mm -hmm. my emotions with that um and then in 2018 I started writing my EP called 2016 um (laughs) which was really a homage to Travis my manager and I released that started performing in Austin San Antonio really that was that was kind of like my debut into the Austin area um 
performed that entire summer. Actually, really the rest of that year, I released Balance, For the Streets, Trap Santa. Uh, I used to be her. I released a lot that <laughs> the year 2019. Um and now I'm here. I just released on me. So that is the Shannon Siona timeline as I know it. Okay. Okay. Mm-hmm. And um, you are fairly young. Uh, I am. Thank uh, you. Where, where did, <laughs> no, damn, we're quiet. <laughs> hey, yeah, I know. I know. Uh, where, where did music like start for you? Um, like at a, was it a young age? Mm-hmm. Yeah, very young. Both of my parents um, are in their 60s, not to age them. Sorry, parents. Damn. Um, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Um, but the music that they listened to were, was, you know, in that time, like Motown, um, Soul, Luther Vandross, Whitney Houston, um, everything from Atlantic Records, really. Um, so my father is a singer. He, he's a soprano singer, sings oh, wow. in church. And my mother was a dancer and a cheerleader and a cheer coach and a dance, a dance coach. So um, I really got my influence through them solely. I would have to say uh, the first song I ever s- sang live was If I Ain't Got You by Alicia Keys. Mm. That was introduced by my mother, so, you know. Um, but I am Sicilian, black, <laughs> Irish, and Cherokee Indian, so I have influences from from a lot of places. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Cool. Okay. Okay. But yeah, that's where I really got my start. Um, but I started singing with my father, and then when I was eight, I decided that this is what I wanted to do for the rest of my life, uh, be on Broadway one day and mm-hmm. be in that. Wa- the goal was to get the EGOT. Yeah. Like Whoopi Goldberg. Yeah. Had that, and I think that's still the goal to this day. Yeah. Um, so I got a music teacher in sixth grade. And I was I was performing for this talent show called Our Part of Town in San Antonio. I don't know. It used to be a huge thing back when Time Warner Cable okay. was still on TV. And uh, like you got and like it was a channel. I don't know. You got to be on on TV. So I, I did that for a few years, um, like what, sixth through eighth grade. Um and then in high school, I really just focused on cheerleading. So I didn't do much singing those few years. And then once I got back to college, once I went to college, it was right back to musical theater. So mm. okay. it's really been my entire life. So you only yeah. took like a break momentarily, but only you were still focusing on your Yeah, I art. had gotten burnt out, I uh, think. Okay. Um, uh, the singing teacher that I had was wonderful, but I wasn't doing anything else except going to his house and freaking singing scales <coughs> like... Oh. Damn, like yeah. how, how... It becomes how, a chore. It was a chore. It really was. And I was so young. Eighth grade is like, what, you're 13? Mm-hmm. So that's like, you know, you care about your friends. And you, I cared about MySpace at the time. You know, yeah, I, I cared about Jersey. other things. Yeah, and it, I wasn't doing shows. I wasn't on interviews. I was... Um, it was just a lot of talk and a lot of... Uh, practicing scales so I was like yo this is not getting me anywhere and I want to be a high school cheerleader Mm -hmm. so um, but I think that's another lesson that I've learned throughout the years is focus on the action and not people talking because my god people will talk to you about anything to keep you around and keep you keep you having them working so um, I'll never make that mistake again either I don't think yeah yeah (laughs) And, and, and it's funny, too, because um, at a young age, I was actually in uh, theater as well. Mm. Um, so <clears throat> pretty much to keep me out of trouble, uh, my mom put me in a performing arts camp uh, at my church. Um, I don't know if you know who Chester D.T. Baldwin is. He's a f- Grammy Award winning mm-hmm. gospel singer. He was actually like our like minister of music. So he played oh, wow. the music every day at our church. So, uh, um, yeah, I was I did theater early, too, and those skills. Like, thing is, I don't have a voice anymore like <laughs> I used to, but, man, if you run them tapes back, oh, uh, man. Hey, I mean, your notes. forget about it. You know what I mean? Nah, nah, I could say, I got, you know, I had a little voice on me a yeah. little bit. I feel you know? like every black person can sing just a little bit, or at least hold a note. Uh, harmonize or hold something. Hold a note. Or something. Okay, yeah, yes. yeah. Or at least are familiar with the catalog Mm -hmm. uh (laughs) you know Mm -hmm. we we at least have that uh and doing skills is good training is good i i don't train as much as i used to but only doing training and not doing anything else it's like why are you making me waste my time man exactly just so i could sit here and look at your face and you play the piano Mm. had had you ever been in like an actual like recording studio recorded music at a young age like that no no i think if i would have i don't know if i'd still be doing this yeah. um i do appreciate that i was actually allowed like able to live my life with the freedom of being a child um 
outside of like live performances, I didn't do much. And and back then, you know, you used to have to uh, burn CDs. I didn't know how to do that, so I would just sing acapella. <laughs> <laughs> I would just sing everything acapella. And even in those talent shows when it was televised, everybody else sang with music. Here I get, here I come, just singing "Dreaming of You" um, acapella. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, wow. um, but no, I never really did my, my, I was more of a cheerleader. I started cheerleading and singing at the same time, really. And so that was like a journey that I took together. Got you. Mm. So Got I you. focused on both. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So you went off to college and uh, what was your major in college? Theater. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So actually senior year of high school, <laughs> I was actually supposed to be an officer in the cheer squad and I quit oh. um, to be in choir and, oh, okay. and theater okay. and all the cheerleaders were mad at me and all the choir kids didn't like me because I was a cheerleader trying uh, to go into choir mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. um, so that was a very lon lonely year but I needed to learn how to read music I didn't want to be a cheer coach I didn't want to work for UCA yeah. so I had to figure out what the hell I was going to do you could only have two electives so uh, I went into a uh, choir we went acapella halfway like uh, Pitch Perfect. I was just about to ask. I was yeah, just, just like Pitch Perfect. That movie. And um, we actually competed. I I don't know what made us think that we could compete, but we did. And we actually made it to the finals oh, in wow. New York. Oh, wow. We didn't know how we were going to pay for it. Um, so we, I think Kona 101.9 or something in San Antonio was uh, doing a contest. And the winners would get to perform with Foreigner. Like a movie. <laughs> yeah, like, so like literally. <laughs> literally. So we did... Cold as ice, um, an awesome. acapella version, and they picked us. Mm. So we got to open up for Foreigner and sing "I Want to Know What Love Is" with Foreigner, that and they paid. Wow. They paid for our New York trip, so <clears throat> we went to New York and won fourth place, and that was Jeez. literally from List going to a show choir. In to, yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Um, our first time ever doing acapella, we didn't have sheet music; we just improved everything. And now I think still. At Madison, they are an acapella group. They're show choir. They had show oh, choir. Wow. So, Damn. yeah. And then I went to college and I created a acapella group at Texas State. They're called the Echoes. Okay. Uh, I I founded them in my freshman year in 2013, and I think they're on like their seventh president now. Oh, shit. <laughs> so that is awesome. They're still doing their thing in San Marcos and. They talk about me every year. They like I'm the found. Why well, am yeah. the, I'm the founder? But I just think of like freaking George Washington. I just <laughs> that's just what put, I think about. They were just they, pull up just to make people faint and pass right, out. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm afraid I'm gonna pull up and they're gonna be like, "Who's this yeah, girl? Yeah. Like, who, who Look at the big she picture is? on the wall. Like, yeah. That's me. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm the reason for all this. No. Um, but I do. I do. Well, not recently, but I did. I was trying to like go to the audition to like be a part. But after a certain age you know it's like all right let's grow up let's move on you know like let's let's let them have it so but it's cool it's a cool accomplishment i i tend to not speak about it in interviews and stuff because it i don't think to but yeah yeah it was a cool time in my life yeah it's all part of the bu building blocks of mm -hmm. yeah. what made you who you are today yeah especially leading um having to lead 12 to 14 college kids Sheesh. when you're a college when kid you and, yourself yeah and you can't really read music and you're sitting here trying to make arrangements for everyone and you don't character. have a, yeah. yes um i mm. learned a lot about paperwork and the business side of things Do you feel like it makes you more authoritative like when it when it comes to being in music business because i yes. feel like that's something that people seem to lack here and they're just kind of push over type you know yeah i think that um in general as an artist your goal is to not worry about the business side, right? So you don't mm -hmm. focus that much on it. Um, after doing the Echoes, I decided to take a, a business course, actually, so that I could, um, you know, learn about <coughs> contracts and things like that because I had been screwed over from the Sion project and everything else. Um, so I would definitely say that it has helped my leadership skills. It's helped my independence, um, you know, watching my own back uh, and just being professional mm -hmm. in ways that, you can only learn through experience <clears throat> and not necessarily like a class or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, man. That's, that's, that's crazy. Like I said, 67 inside. So. <laughs> well, one day this will be a movie. <laughs> oh, I hope so. Could you imagine one day? That is That'd be crazy. So uh, just, you know, when you graduated college or whatnot, right, mm -hmm. um, did you already have it in your mind that you were going to, gonna, you know, go back fully singing? You wanted to be, you know, who you are here today? Like, did you have a plan? Oh, I graduated in 2017, so I honestly was still grieving 
Travis. Mm -hmm. At that time, I really didn't want to do much. We were a part of a collective, so there were about 50 of us. Wow. I would say maybe under 10 are still working. Um, so we it took us, it, it really made a dent um, there. So I really had to like rebrand again for the third time. Um, and really figure out like what the fuck am I about to sure. do really because um, sure. it's it's just me. Um, so after taking all my classes in theater and musical theater and seeing how competitive it was as a number, um, I decided I didn't want to go into the theater community as a number. And I wanted to go as Shannon Siona, meaning um, people who have been on Broadway like Jennifer Hudson, um, Cuba Gooding Jr., Kerry Washington, they did not necessarily start on Broadway, but mm -hmm. since they had a name for themselves, they were able to get in. Um, since singing is my strong suit, and I would say I can dance, but as far as tap dancing, ballet, you know, those basics, yeah. I uh, that is not my strong suit. Yeah. So I, I had to play to my strengths, which was singing. Um, and, and I don't limit it to that. I do love music and I want to make timeless music and have my music be played for years to come like Michael Jackson and Anita but um, I also want to be in movies and TV shows and plays and have a standing ovation on Broadway mm -hmm. and be the being you know be the headline of the show on Broadway that that's been my dream like I said since I was eight so um, this phase of my life I guess is just working towards the bigger picture, mm -hmm. which has been really everything I've done in my life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not going to lie. I've always wanted to go to Broadway. Like I've, I've never been. I've never Damn. Been to like, I went once. Yeah. When, what did you see? When we went um, for the competition. Okay. Um, I got to see Spider-Man on Broadway, which what? it was okay. I mean, they. <laughs> it was cool because the Spider-Man's like fly over you uh, and stuff. But oh, I mean, that was about it. Um, my favorite musical, actually, is called The Last Five Years, and we did get to see it off-Broadway. It's a mm. two, two-person two show, <clears throat> and it's basically about this couple and their relationship of five years. And the woman starts at the beginning, and the man starts at the end, and it goes like this, and they meet in the at their wedding day, and then it mm. goes like this. And you, okay. like, see all their phases of their relationship, so... That was very exciting getting to see that on Broadway, but I still want to see The Lion King and Wicked. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> definitely want to see The Lion is, King. Is the, uh, is the Nutcracker considered mm -hmm. such? Yeah. <laughs> That's the closest I can think that I could ever. Um, <laughs> I don't, I don't, no. It's like a ballet. There you go. <laughs> yeah, there you a go. ballet. See, all of that to me is like. <clears throat> so so you, you've never like been into theater or saw like i got kicked out of theater class in middle school Damn. somebody like <laughs> we were yeah we were just bad kids other than that like i've never i've seen west side story okay okay um, that's musical. That is. troy put me on to that movie rent yeah okay. that's a musical okay. too yeah, yeah. I, I i'm not a, i'm not a broadway too i'm not a big musical person okay. like it, it like it's annoying to me like mm. it, like i don't know it's I just, annoying to you no, yeah no. but that's why i want to go see a live yeah. broad, like play you know like a yeah. broadway you know because <laughs> Maybe it's different compared to just watching on the movies or whatever, yeah. you know. So I don't know. Even in movies and musicals, for me, the score the uh, is so important. The of orchestra, course. orchestra score, and so there's just something about the live singing and the live score, mm -hmm. and you're live on, you know, in the theater on Broadway. There's just so much history, and it's just so not what you hear on the radio. You know, exactly. now I'm not going to I'm not going to lie. There are some cheesy songs, some cheesy musicals. Not like everything Greece. is great. Grease. I love Grease. <laughs> <laughs> I love Grease. I've only watched Grease <laughs> once and no. I was high as hell. Dude, no, Grease 2 is where I it's was at. So cool. <laughs> Grease, Grease is cool. Grease yeah. is all right. It's cool. It's, it's cool, cool, man. Grease 2 is where it's at. It's an unpopular opinion, but I like Grease 2 more yeah. than I like Grease okay. 1. I think the music is better in Grease 2. But I have no idea they had a, a sequel. Wow. It is. It's great. I honestly think it's amazing but that's not a popular <laughs> opinion at all and i know that it's not and i accept it yeah. i accept it for what it is so yeah i was definitely much more of a musical theater fan in in uh high school like that's what i listen to all the time i would say right now i'm obsessed with uh this group called blackpink Black which is Pink. a k-pop group which i am don't like k-pop at all okay. but okay. um they are the most fly Girls I have ever seen. Okay. Um, not only that, their production is, well, obviously, you know, 
age of money they got it they yeah. got that and, yeah, and was... the technology and everything so the the quality of their music videos is unbelievable yeah. um the sets that they use all live sets live fire live rain um the, that's what i am striving for okay. you know in my quality of of work is something to that level so i appreciate their beats i appreciate the score in the background like i said and they're just somebody like a group that I admire. Mm-hmm. I don't really listen to the radio. They're like a Broadway group or like an actual band. Oh no, like they're band. K-pop, 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 K-pop. But like a band or just just do like a uh, girl group. Yeah, uh, yeah. Singers. Like uh, what's what's the guys? The famous K-pop oh, BTS. BTS. Yeah. I got introduced to like B- like mm-hmm. K-pop like years ago. And I was thought it was the weirdest thing, and then it just blew up into <laughs> yeah. fandom. They did. Yeah. They did. Yeah. It was a, um, <clears throat> like overnight. Um, but that's the same with like Blackpink. They they headlined Coachella. Mm. One wow. year, I do know that, um, and and I know that they're definitely making their way to America more. They like performed on Jimmy Fallon and sure. what's that UK dude does karaoke in the oh, car? Oh, the little uh, chunky white dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I can't remember his chunky name. Chunky white yeah. dude. <laughs> I don't know. <want> <laughs> I said, James least I Corbin. Said you what, what, James what's Corbin. the appropriate James term? Corbin. What's the appropriate term? I just said UK, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't even gonna. I just stuck to his voice. My apologies, guy. <laughs> I'm hefty too. It's okay. Yeah. <laughs> now there's a listener thinking about, damn, am I the chunky white boy? I know. I uh, my my advertisement. I try to focus on UK, and I was like, I'm so sorry, guy. <laughs> Funny thing is, is with uh, so when me and Mario, like, of course, with us building our friendship, mm. um, he wanted me to put him on to some like R and B and things like that. Um, Who'd you put him on? Oh, I put the him classics. on. I put him on the classics. classics. I put him mm. on classics, and then like you say, Neo Soul. Yeah. You know, and so my my girl is a very earthy. Uh, Shout know, out to her. Stones, you like it's more the spalding. Yeah, Tell Zo- her to call Zodiacs, me. <laughs> yes, the whole nine, right? Uh, and we love Neo Soul. Like I'm mm-hmm. actually rocking a Jesse Boykins merch. I don't know if you know who Jesse Boykins is. Jesse Boykins the third. He kills it. Uh, <laughs> cold, but uh, um, yeah, we we listen to a lot of Neo Soul, and uh, mm-hmm. I, get, I made him this huge ass like playlist of like classics and like um. There's this real fly guy out of uh, UK. He's an older dude. His name is Omar. I don't know if you've ever mm. heard of him, but mm. he is he he's amazing. So. Thought you were gonna say Xavier. Omar. I know, but oh, no, 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 I, no, do no, know I do no, know him. No, 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 yeah, no. Yeah. Yeah. I'm from San Antonio, right? Yeah, we worked yeah, at Bill yeah. Miller's yeah. together. Shut wow, up. Yeah, we did, we did. Tell uh, respond to my DMs. <laughs> yeah, for real, we didn't wrote him. Yeah, right? he wrote him a yeah, couple times. Yeah, okay, I got you. I got you. I just yeah. saw him actually. I performed at the Rose Bistro. He was Xavier Omar. If you're watching, right. Come on, was Zango is about to go on tour. Was that, was that AJ Bray show? It was. Yeah. Shout out AJ Bray, yeah, shout a friend out AJ of the show. Bray. For real, for real. Love that guy. He'll be back soon. Yeah. Uh, he's been booming on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> Going hey, viral, yeah. yeah. He's speaking his mind, man. You know, you know how it goes. Yeah, you know, you know how it goes. <laughs> He's always been that way. Um, but yeah, ooh, but yeah, Xavier Omar and I, we worked at Bill Miller's together in high school. I used to beatbox while he would sing yeah. and rap while we made breakfast tacos. <laughs> that is cool. fucking in the beatbox. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, for real, for real. And then before he moved, yeah. Um, <laughs> No, please don't ask me to beatbox. I haven't done it in so long. <laughs> On the spot. We got a beatbox in here oh now. Like, you want freestyle? Then you better beatbox. Dude. <laughs> oh, my God. I haven't done it in years. I'm going to spit all over all right. my COVID precautions. Hey, um, I got spray. What's it called? No. Uh, <laughs> Lysol. Lysol spray. No, no. No. Oh, hey, what's your girlfriend's sign? Uh, she's a Taurus. I'm a Capricorn. Mm, okay. Yeah. I don't. Uh, Tell her to DM me. Yeah. I, you just, I don't, <laughs> we could I don't, be friends. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anything. We could be friends. I'm a Gemini, so I know that I'm like. Two face. Oh shit! Wouldn't say that. Well, it just—I mean, it's technically two dish. You know? (laughs) Hey, don't don't tell my co-host that. Nah, no, we're a little—we're a little crazy. Like I always tell people, I have like. uh, So my name is Nick, but my Mm. real name is Nicholas. Uh, I always say I have like Nicholas and I have Nick. Mm. Like it's like literally two different people. It's like night and day. I feel it. You know what I'm saying? What's your middle name? Man, you want people looking up? What's what's your middle name? I'll tell you my middle name. Bryant. Marie. Okay, okay. What's your middle name? I'm not putting that. I'm just kidding. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. hey, what's your middle name? It's Alberto. Alberto. Uh, Alberto. Well, Alberto. Who, Albert. Yeah. Albert, I guess if you want to. English, I say. Make yeah. it in English. I don't know how it's yeah. proper. Okay, okay. 
Damn, right. nobody, nobody's asked me what's my middle name in so long, man. I'm curious. I want to know more about you. I know, man. I want to know you. Y'all's relationship is so cute. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. I miss you, Troy. Don't get jealous. <laughs> I know, Troy, man. We're, we're thinking about you, man. Troy's in, what, Louisiana right now, right? Damn, Troy. I don't Somewhere know who you there. are, but I miss you, man. I wish you were here. <laughs> He's going to love that. He, I know Gumball misses you for sure. <laughs> Gumball. Who's Gumball? It's his uh, cat. It's, it's his cat. child, oh. basically. And uh, unfortunately, Gumball had to stay behind while he goes to... Uh, to travel for work yeah. and so uh, a while back uh, like about a week ago I went to his house to go pick up a few things and whatnot I check up about his things here and there and I FaceTime him and I was like um, last time he came home he recorded a video of him like coming home and was like come on come on he has like this whole like phrases that he says to him so i was like save that and send it to me <laughs> and so i played it when i walked into the apartment uh-huh. gumba comes out all excited and now i felt bad because he was Aww. pissed at me because it wasn't, oh, it wasn't <laughs> <this guy. laughs> yeah but i was facetiming troy and i was like look he was all happy. he was damn near crying on the phone Aww. he loves that cat <laughs> That's nice. Yeah, that is so funny, man. That's funny. Um, shit, let's run the track, man. Let's run our first track. Ooh, <laughs> what's the first? What'd y'all pick? Well, we, um, oh, I get to pick. Yeah, nor- so normally we we let the guests pick, but wow. if you want us to pick, you know, we got everything streaming. Oh, that makes currently. me nervous. <laughs> everything <laughs> streaming currently. Um, let me see. Let me see. I want my favorite song of my own. Is balance. I was literally on that one right now. Like that's the one that I have um, right here. I would say that's definitely also like the most <coughs> on brand, on point of Shannon Siona. Balance, too. let's mm-hmm. go. Balance and all streaming platforms. Run it up. Run it up. Shout out Kevin Davidson. Okay. Kevin Davidson. Thank oh, you. and Chris San Andreas. And Chris. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, that was balance. Uh, I wrote it in 2019 when I was in a. I was working at the country club and. I couldn't stand working at the country club, and I just wanted to do music. Um, and I wrote the first line like, <coughs> well, um, in our lineup while they were telling us about the night I was writing oh, lyrics, because <laughs> that's how done I was. Okay. Um, do, you, yeah. do you write all your music? I write all my music. Cool. Yeah. Now I do have uh, <coughs> I I have no problem shouting her out. I do have a ghostwriter that I work with sometimes. Her name is Brandix. Um, I was gonna ask about it because I heard one of your songs. And do you sing Spanish in that song? She does. It was just all her. She does. Okay, yeah. I was just curious about that, but yeah. I like her singing as well. Um, so she actually was in the Echoes with me mm. uh, in college, and that's how we met. And I, Boy Bye was my first single off of 2016. The beat automatically made me think of um, Spanish music, and I'm very a big part of my <clears throat> branding is being genuine and authentic, and I do not speak Spanish, so okay. <laughs> and I am not Hispanic at all. <laughs> so I wanted to make make sure that I did it correctly. So mm-hmm. I had Brandix hop on the song and write the Spanish part. Uh, she actually also helped me write I Used to Be Her and the song coming out with Cynthia next year. That's dope. That's dope. Yes. Yo. Um, the funny thing is, I, I, I just hear I just hear certain things and I, funny <clears throat> stories come to my head. Um Because you say you don't speak Spanish, right? Yeah. So, okay. <clears throat> so I'm from north side of Austin, right? Where I am, it's predominantly... Uh, Hispanic people, uh-huh. right? Um, black people, of course, as well. But uh, when I went to elementary school, um, they put me in an all Spanish class. Like, I was the only like black kid in there, <laughs> and uh, you know, doing the days of the months, and you know, it's, it's just everything was Spanish. And I and I was like so fucking lost. I was so lost. Damn. So like uh, recently, uh, he threw his uh, first show with Vincent J. Um, and uh, the title is La Buena oh, Onda. I know. I know Vintage Jay. Shout yeah. out Vintage Jay. Yeah, yeah. Shout out, shout out to him. Hey, he's from where I'm from. So, okay. Uh, so, but I was like talking to him. I'm like, bro, how do you say this? And what the hell does this mean? Because I don't want, I don't want to say shit wrong. I don't want to fuck up. I'm yeah. doing interviews. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So. Uh, but yeah, la, la buena onda. La buena onda. La buena onda. He got it. <laughs> yeah, you feel me? He oh, got it. Damn. Hey, hey, I'm trying. There I'm you trying. go. Ooh, Uh-oh. There's Uh-oh. um. Oh my god. Um, there's one line that I remember from second grade. I was I went to a private school, St. Pius, and it's the only line I remember in Spanish. Hardcore, and it is Hola, buenos días, mi amo Shannon. Tengo siete años, me cumple años. <laughs> and I'm saying, Hi, my name is Shannon, and I'm seven years old. <laughs> and my birthday is, and that's all I remember. <laughs> that's, all, that's all I remember. I just caught me off guard. I was like, Wow, <laughs> that's all I remember from second grade. Um, that is hilarious. but it stays with me. <laughs> that is hilarious. It's near and dear to my heart. To learn, to yeah, keep, to remember. I wow. broke the mic again, bro. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry, I get that. It's my fault. No, it's me. Let me just. Nah, you're all good. Put a pin here. 
She just don't want to stay up. For real, for real. I need something. Shut up. Nice. Manpower. You may, you gonna tilt I'll just, uh, no, I'm just, I'm not even going to touch it again. I'm just going <laughs> to fix my posture here. <laughs> we good. All right. <clears throat> But anyways. Yeah, I'm cutting that out. <laughs> <laughs> of course, of course, of course. Anyways. All right, where are we at? Um, um, this is not the most professional, professional <laughs> podcast. Of you. It's cool. Uh, I'm great company to keep. That's all that means. <laughs> That's all that means. You feel very comfortable. Um, so, yeah. So, so, so let's stay on music, okay? Yeah. Um, you're working on a project? So I actually just released um, a single called On Me. Mm-hmm. Um, it was going to be a part of a project, but I think I'm going to release these songs as singles because my next EP I want to do with a live band in the studio um, because right now all the songs are from beats. Gotcha. So the goal is for the next EP to be all live music. Um, but I did just release a song. It's called On Me. I released it in September. And fun fact about that song is... It's been on MTV for the past two months. What? The music video has, yeah. <clears throat> Which was shocking um, because I obviously am not signed. And, yeah. Um, How did yeah. that happen? Um, gosh, long story short. Uh, I met a lady on a flight to L.A. from San Francisco who worked with Beyonce. And so, of course, I had to sit down and talk to her because it was Beyonce. Of course. And ended up missing my flight. <laughs> and, oh. uh, but maintained a relationship with her and, on Facebook. And, <clears throat> and that was a few years ago. And she wrote me and she said, hey, I think that your music video um, is MTV worthy. Let's submit it and see what happens. So I said, okay. And we did. And they accepted it. And... I thought it was only going to be for a month, but we're on month two now. Wow. Uh, and it plays about two times a day on That's MTV. Awesome. So, that is amazing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. shout out to, to uh, Miss Deidre. And <clears throat> I was not expecting it at all. I directed the music video. I uh, got the location, got the choreographer, got all the extras, oh, did everything. So that was my first time kind of... Um, Doing a music video like that, like a movie set, really. Uh, so I'm very proud of myself. Yeah. <laughs> yeah Congratulations, sure. man. Thanks. That's crazy. Did you did you get any type of like uh, did you did you feel like the impact from your music video being on there? Like like fans <coughs> coming streams? No. Okay. Unfortunately, MTV is not as popular as it once was. <laughs> mm-hmm. I think it was more of a personal goal. Yeah. I you know I used to wake up. I mean, everyone of, of my age group did. You, you would wake up and watch music videos in the morning yeah. before school or on Saturday mornings, you know, they'd play it till like 2 p.m. And mm-hmm. that was the thing. You would watch music videos all day. So it was more of a personal accomplishment. Like, mm-hmm. holy shit, I did this. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm actually on MTV. I have not gotten any monetary gain from it, but that's not what it's all about, you know. Yeah. So hopefully, maybe one day somebody will see me and something will happen. Mm. But... In a, in itself, I think it's awesome. Yeah. What is it like performing with a band, man? You said a six-piece band. <clears throat> a six-piece band, yeah. Um, I've actually only gotten to perform with them once. I didn't have a band until I went to San Antonio, mm. actually, which is surprising. There's a lot more live musicians, I would say, in San Antonio than Austin. Um, so I would say, thankfully, uh, since I had my Echoes training and you know being a leader for the Echoes, I just used that to bring these band members together because they, a few of them perform together in other bands, but some of them don't, and they had never all worked with each other. So pulling them all together to, A, work in a new group and do my music um, was, I was nervous. (laughs) Um, But it actually worked out really well. We blended really well together. The first day, we all got along really well. I, like, played the office in the background, and (laughs) um, it felt like we had known each other forever. So we performed at Hondros. I I, uh, headlined Hondros down uh, in San Antonio on St. Mary Street. And it was honestly amazing. It, It... you get so used to performing by yourself for so many years and, and having to take up the space of the entire stage and, you know, you're the sole focus and it's it's a lot of pressure and having everybody on stage with me, um, it felt 
more present. Mm -hmm. I was definitely more present. I was enjoying, you know, the the stage time with the Jorian, my sax player, who was standing right next next to me, or hearing the piano in the background, having Karina on my drums, counting us off. Definitely made me feel not so alone. Um, and I got to enjoy the music again because a lot of the songs, you know, that I perform, I've been performing since. 2019, which doesn't seem like that long because of COVID, but when you've been with these songs forever, it feels old. But performing them with the band, it, it makes it feel brand new, like like the brand new songs. Yeah, yeah. I always feel like, um, you know, coming up uh, w as an artist, trying to just like like gain fans, recurring fans. Like as a as an R and B artist, like is it is it hard? Like kind of like because mm. I because I look at like rappers, right? Mm -hmm. Like you can fucking make a song about anything nowadays anything. and get fans, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And and I guess nowadays R&B, your typical R&B, especially like what you hear on the radio, isn't like real R&B, it's more poppy. Mm. Um, d do you ever struggle with that? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I would, I would say more of the PR advertising side of things because I see myself as a very old school business mm -hmm. person. Um, so... Things that I care about aren't necessarily things that artists today care about, um, like asses in the seats yeah, <laughs> and, no. um, you know, people actually knowing your music and being moved by the music and being present in the moment and not just for the recap video or for the beat drop or, you know. Or the dance moves or the twerking. I That's, you know, yeah. it's, I would say that's the most difficult thing uh, to compete with is... The temptation of that easy mm -hmm. following and gain, but that's not why I'm doing this, you know. It's it, uh, and I think that this is so much bigger than me and so much more important than me, um, to just be doing things like that. And especially in my music and what I write about, uh, a huge thing for me is climate change, and I'm very big on environmental activism, so that is part of the reason why I'm using this, you know, foundation anyway, and uh, this audience uh, is to, you know, spread word about, um, <clears throat> excuse me, sorry, it's to spread word about climate change. Mm -hmm. uh, and I just don't think that dancing, you know, or doing TikToks correlates to that. <clears throat> yeah. Maybe in some form I could, I could do like alternative <clears throat> videos for Something TikTok. creative. Yeah, yeah, you know, creative yeah. like that, but... I will not say that's my strong suit. Yeah. Um, I just I just want to make timeless music, and I I kind of wish it wasn't so online these days because anybody can just do anything. Anybody can buy anything. Anybody can, and it's it's so overcrowded and there's no substance left. So um, I would just say being patient and staying in my own lane and not giving in. Yeah. 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 You could be doing like <coughs> covers and shit. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like a lot of singers like to do on TikTok I, and Yeah, show. I do. And you know what? The the craziest thing is is just <coughs> filming myself. Yeah. I used to, not even two years ago, I was filming myself like every, almost every day, doing covers. Even during corn, uh, COVID, I was filming myself quite a bit. I don't know if it's because I'm not home all the time mm -hmm. or I just don't have a full face of makeup on all the time. <laughs> um, but I think... The last few months specifically, I've just been so much more focused on the business side of um, my production that it hasn't been on the forefront for me to just hop on TikTok, you know? Yeah. And I and the goal is to make this a sustaining business, right? And even though TikTok is beautiful and wonderful and it's nice to go viral, it's kind of hard to gain yes. actual customers and actual A audience members fans. that want to, yes, and don't get bored of you after two videos, mm -hmm. you know? Um, everybody's retention rate is like two seconds, like yep. that's yeah. it. And yep. so I would also say that's probably another very challenging thing is, is the retention span of people because what people like and what people are willing to continue continuously watch is not necessarily what I'm doing. <laughs> um, so trying to navigate that, I think, definitely, and just creating music that can still touch people because, mm -hmm. you know, emotions mm -hmm. will always be. For sure. And people need <clears throat> artists to tell those stories for yeah. them, you know. So, yeah. um, so 
that's just what I focus on. And, and I just got with a management company. So hopefully soon I will not have to worry about the business okay. aspect as hardcore and anymore. And I can focus more on, you know, the artist side of things. I feel like definitely like as you get more into like the performances and having a full life band, that'll bring them more genuine fans as opposed to having like to do small little clips of yeah. your random podcast on TikTok and whatnot, you know? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, that definitely... Um, I understand the whole, like, um, just because, yeah, TikTok, you will just take whoever will come. Mm-hmm. Whereas if you're doing the live performances with the full band and mm-hmm. an intimate setting, like, you're connecting on a deeper level with right. these people. And I feel like that's a lot more important than the long run because whether it be one or five people in that one show, next time you come back around, like, they'll be more eager to right. come around and bring more people and whatnot, you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I also... It's, uh, I run into a problem of, am I really releasing enough music? You know, mm. there's a lot of artists out there that release music like Back every month, them, yep. every mo- and and you're like, oh shit, am I not doing enough? But I just think about Michael Jackson in the studio, <laughs> and how many takes he took, you know, for that one perfect take, and and how much of a span, uh, you know, Jasmine Sullivan hasn't dropped a album in in almost 10 years you know so and she's still right back on top right where she was and so i know that it's possible um and the goal uh, definitely one of my goals within this next year is to grow musically Mm -hmm. in that way spend more time in the studio and add more harmonies and add more things that i can't necessarily do with them the beat or two hours in the studio you know um really being in a place where I can be in the studio with them all night and and still be able to pay them and mm-hmm. um and create mm-hmm. bodies of work that hopefully in thirty years people will still be you know listening to i I saw Anita Baker on her farewell concert in Vegas, mm. and th- I've never experienced anything like that in a yeah. concert. I've been to many a concerts yeah. I had the high road tour in Aiko, I've been to ACL and it's it's you know, that is an energy of itself, like ACL. Um, you know, everybody is dancing to the beat and doing all these things, and everyone's adrenaline is going crazy. But to be in that theater and hear Anita's song starting, and at literally every single person in that audience not only stood up, mm-hmm. but started singing to the point where she didn't even sing. Yeah. And that was, it was like mm-hmm. that for every song. They sang the entire song, and then they would sit down, and she would sing it back. Yeah. <laughs> and, like, that already takes patience in itself like what you know and people wouldn't leave like she would she would literally have to sing and she was like i will sing this song but at the end of the song like it has to be an empty theater and people were standing in the doors like Mm -hmm. listening to her finish i believe it so um that's that's what i want you know that's what i want to do and she's like almost 70 yeah and she and and she recently won her like case to get to for her music to be streamable i don't know so okay so here Mm -hmm. let Mm -hmm. me let me learn you something that's black twitter yeah that's what i'm gonna say (laughs) let me learn you something mario (laughs) anita baker to us is like everything like whitney i mean she's like mainstream whitney for it's, blacks it's 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 cleaning up household <laughs> yes, music that's right that's sunday normally, sunday morning God, yes. and, and it's yeah yeah so that's what anita means to us that, that's crazy i saw um you ever been to the urban fest here in austin i haven't but i really oh, want man. to and i really also want to go to funk fest in okay. san antonio, in san antonio. Yeah, yeah yeah those yeah. are two that i really i want to perform one day i saw shaka khan Oof. um wow at at the urban fest and uh, the funny thing is, is like we couldn't stay. So like as she's performing like through the fire, we're like walking to our car, and I'm like, <laughs> reach out, like, oh my goodness, like, oh, you know. Yes. And I'm young as shit, but like I, I know what that song means to like my mom mm-hmm. and like you know her planet, and I'm just like, damn man. So like to see the legends, like yeah, uh, life changing. And and, the, and these audience members, me included, are singing their heart, like literally singing to her as mm-hmm. if they've been waiting their entire lives for this moment, yeah. and they. You know, people feel that way about Beyonce, I know, and, and, and things like that. But Anita, all she has is her voice and the, mm-hmm. the music, and mm-hmm. that's it. And to see these people, like, like they're in church or crying or grasping onto their loved mm-hmm. one, like, that is what it means to me. Like, that's that's what's important to me in, in all aspects, whether it be theater and doing the show and getting the standing O or doing a movie or doing a TV show that's filmed live. You know, it's about those magical moments that are unexplainable and 
but the people in the room know what yeah, know what it is, sure. you know. For sure, for sure. And I don't think that happens very often anymore. Uh, not yeah. at all. Now you you would literally have to catch like like a legend to get that quality yeah. and that feel. Um, yeah. I'm trying to see like um, who else like I'm trying to see who else have I gotten that feel with in concert. I've seen a lot of people too. Uh, singers, um, like I've been to a lot of like neo soul shows. Mm. So like I don't know if you know who Eric Robeson is. I do. So uh, uh, I took my girl to see Eric Robeson for her birthday one year, and this dude six piece band as well. Mm. You know, fucking he's he's fr- this dude freestyle sings, bro. Like he he'll tell cr- the crowd member, hey, like give me a word. Wow. And he's like <laughs> harmonizing with the word. Yeah. I'm like, and the band is perfectly playing. I'm like, oh wow. shit, man. Wow. So, so that's another feel of uh, um, <clears throat> that I've gotten. Um, Mario, have you ever like? I know, we share a love for Brent Fias. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, Toxicity. Hey. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, I'm Scorpio. Right, yeah, exactly, exactly, exactly. All right, Scorpio. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> this is my brother when it comes to Brent, man. Like, mm. like I feel, I, I feel. Brent. I didn't get into like R&B and like singing music until like I want to say maybe five, six years ago. Mm. But because like. You know, I, I myself, I'm a first generation born here, you know, so I didn't even learn English till I was like mm, third, fourth grade, mm-hmm. maybe. So everything at that point was just all Spanish music. Like mm-hmm. I'm sure like the music that you guys like yeah. are talking about, I have yeah. my versions of it, but I never got introduced to like R&B or stuff like that until like way later, you mm-hmm. know, but. Well, I mean, I am from San Antonio, so Selena was like <laughs> the first person I ever saw perform yeah. um, the last concert. That's and, awesome. Uh, that. Yeah, she's pretty much sculpted like most of my journey too. As mm. far as full, full around entertainer and being sexy, but mm-hmm. still empowering. Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, um, sophisticated. Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> and you know, you know the weird thing about Selena, man. Um, being just like a you know little black kid, like of course I saw the movie, right? Mm, yeah. But I, I never understood like the significance. Mm. Like in the in the like Chicano and yeah, bro. Like Mexican American. Like it it was amazing to see. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Like yeah. I know uh, sometimes on like our public access channel, they used to show like her old throwback concerts and oh, shit. Yeah. And I was like, these motherfuckers is like passing out. Yeah. Like like, 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 Michael, like Michael. Michael's here. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Like it's Michael. Yeah. Dude, I would have passed out too. Dead ass. I, 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 I really would have. I mean, her voice was amazing. Um, and just what happened was just so tragic. Yeah. Tragic. Yeah. yeah. I, had, I had an old coworker who used to always tell me about how like. She got to see her like early on, mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. when she was doing like quinceañeras and shit. I'm like, wow, <laughs> like, crazy. that would have been amazing. Yeah. Just, like Insane. looking back, damn. I saw, I saw in that. Um, well, I didn't see it, but uh, you know when they redid the Selena series, I think it was like on Netflix. Netflix. Oh, yeah, mm-hmm. she like ran into like Beyonce. Yeah, I was just like, is that true? It's true, but it is. I don't think it happened. Like, it didn't happen like that. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, she wasn't okay. fucking yeah. looking back every yeah, two yeah. seconds at her. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, that's just dramatics of the TV. <laughs> but um, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> it could be a huge possibility because Beyonce's daddy is like huge in music too. Yeah. You know? So mm-hmm. at some point, I'm sure at the ground. No, yeah. No, they met. Well, I all know. Um, they <laughs> I no, was <laughs> there. <laughs> I was there. No, but I saw Beyonce's interview. She said she was at the Houston Galleria mm-hmm. and she was shopping and she just like said hello in like passing. But I don't think it was like this like, fucking. It was that scene where she was moment. like, we'll take it off. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Beyonce was there. Yeah. No, I don't that think it was hilarious. like that. But yeah, it's crazy. And then it's also crazy, like, I mean, obviously it's San Antonio, so seeing her everywhere, you know. Mm. But then to see people like Drake wearing her shirt or mm-hmm. like, it's crazy to see it on that type of scale when in San Antonio or Corpus, like, they just, you know, she was just. Yeah. Yeah. It's ti- that's timeless. Like, yeah, it's the that's equivalent timeless. of what time is. That's man, timeless. So. That, that Michael, too. Sa- same with Michael. Yeah. You know, yeah. how is Michael going to have grown men? Passing out, oh, yeah. running yeah. up, you know, on stage and grabbing mm-hmm. him like that's mm-hmm. that is oh, yeah, timeless, that, that is okay? Yeah. Like risking their life for sure. Yeah, um, yeah. That's and it just it's just because the music touched them so much. It's so much, you know. That's and that's inspiring. Mm-hmm. Do you think so. there's somebody in this generation who could be potentially looked back as Shannon Siona? <laughs> hey, 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 you heard it here yeah. first. Yeah, wow. Thank you, thank Shannon. you. Um, I think ha- uh, Chloe and Hallie are very. I think they uh, were very good. Amazing. I. They're still early on, though. You know, yeah, yeah. Yeah. they're Way still early. young, yeah. still young. Um, I think Jasmine has it in, in the I bag. I think her is good as far yeah. as females. Passing out, though? Let me see. Not passing out. <clears throat> not passing out. I, people pass out for Beyonce, but I think Give it's just on? because. Mm, it's, it's the star in it's her. The stardom? Yeah, I think no. it's just the stardom. I don't even know yeah, if people I'm, passing out. Uh, maybe. 
<laughs> I don't even know. I'm over here thinking like I'm, I'm like passing out, like it, running it, on the it, stage. It could have been Chris Brown mm, for <laughs> a know, time. It, it, Justin Bieber for a dent. time. He got a little dent here. Yeah, <laughs> Justin His Bieber career. for a time. You know. Drake for a time. No, Justin yeah. Bieber came back around though. Yeah, like. mm. that, and the, and those fans. I mean, those are you know they will always be fans. They but grew yeah. up. They grew up with him. But yeah. there isn't somebody that. I can say is oh that's the next Whitney or yeah. mm. that's the next Anita or that's the next Erica. I, I don't even know, no, man. That's the next Selena. That's I don't. No, I agree with the uh, Jasmine. I Jasmine Sullivan is. Dope. Or Yeba. I don't know if y'all yeah, know well, about yeah. Yeba. Uh-huh. Yeah. She 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 can she can. She's fairly yeah. new too, right? Yeah, she's fairly new too. Yeah. <laughs> what about uh, Wizkid just did that one song with the uh, what's oh, her name uh. uh I know what you're talking well, about. Well, not just, but like, uh, fuck. You're talking about the Essence song? Yes. What's her name? Um, here, I have it right I'm, here. I'm, like, I'm blanking out. Isabel just I'm sent me out. something about it earlier. Who'd you say? Wizkid? Wizkid. He's a Nigerian. Um, Damn, I need Thames. Thames. Yeah, Thames. T-E-M-S. She's from England, right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, I know. She sings amazing. I know who you're talking about. Um, I'm trying to think. I don't know, man. Who's, uh... So All right. Shut All right. All right. All right. That's why our production All doesn't right. have Thank a microphone. <laughs> stay behind the camera. I'm just kidding. Oh my god. Selena. Shit I have. <laughs> Selena go. Oh my gosh. We, we sound only, like my we daughter. Only, we only talk about one Selena. All right. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Um, um that, that's crazy. I'm not, I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm really trying to rack my brain like who I know. And Especially these days, too. Everybody's trying to push independent, being an independent artist. That shit's mm. expensive, bro. Yeah, yeah. Th- and that's one of the topics that we've talked about. I forgot who was talking about it. It's like one of the things where like, it's ideal to be independent, but if you can maneuver and manipulate the system to your mm-hmm. benefit, mm-hmm. fucking go sign with the label. Mike. Take the money. Yeah. I think it was Mike. Mike yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to be put in a neat situation either all these years later yeah. having to fight in court for your, your music. But yeah. But man, especially with the way inflation and everything has gone up, and it's just it's Bless too you. much. It's too much trying to you have to you have to work to provide for your regular bills, and then you have to pay for all of the uh, yeah. the, the music tree. I don't know. Can a TV, lot. Ne- TV <laughs> network are come and sign us already? Because I'm, right. I'm tired of I'm tired of working construction. For real, for real. Yeah, same uh, with the label. So, so with you is, is you said you signed with the management company recently, right? Yeah. So I, I, there, it's not like a contract. We're just working month to month, and it's basically just for development. If we decide uh, and things work out, and I choose to do long term, um, then I might go that route. But I don't know. I. I just feel like with the le- with where I'm trying to go, I need that major for sure. label. For sure. Um, now, when I'm sitting in that room with the contract in front of my face, um, I've you know taught myself on what questions to ask and what percentages and things like that. Especially if I'm writing everything um, and getting a music lawyer and things like that. But I think that after I think I think now, like now, this year, next year especially now that I have the band and <clears throat> like uh, the name Shannon Siona is a sole proprietorship. I pay taxes, mm. um, much more official. So I applaud you. For thank you. Thank you. So low risk, yeah, low yeah. risk here. Um, I know that labels are looking for people who pretty much have already done all the work. Mm-hmm. You know, they don't want to have to develop somebody. Mm-hmm. Um, but in doing so, you know, I don't, I don't want them to just take that and run with it, and I don't have any say. But at the same time, where what I'm trying to do and where I'm at, like what I, the tools that I have, they're not compatible. Yeah, yeah. So, just navigating, you know, like studio mm-hmm. instead of like I said, instead of just paying for two hours, being able to be there mm-hmm. as long exactly. as because that that goes into you know how many takes I'm gonna do mm-hmm. or like. There's some there's some songs that I've put out that are streaming that I still listen to and there's a part that I'm like fuck I yeah. wish I would have gone back and <laughs> like I wish I would have spent just a little bit more time but because you're an independent and you got to push stuff out because you got to have the quality of it and mm-hmm. then you got to do the IGTV or the reels and do yeah. all these things it yeah. it everything takes away from the product For like sure. the the quality of it 
Definitely, definitely. I um, I, I couldn't even imagine like being an artist. Like I'm, I manage an artist uh, currently, but like me being an artist, like it seems like it, it's it's so much work. Yeah. Um, you know, financially. You know what I'm saying? Like mentally. Uh, um, I, I go through that with my artist right now. I, I always check up on him just to make sure mentally he's good. Like, hey. What kind of space are you in today, man? If you're in a bad space, let's get you up out of that. Mm. Because how can we create if, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, um, but yeah, like, I, it, and it's all you behind you as far as financing everything. It's all everything. me behind me. I cool. do have, uh, I'm, I'm in the process of trying to get more investors and sponsors. Um, that's also why I, re- I just released merch. Mm. Mm. Thank you, Commercial Break. Go ahead and plug it. Commercial Break. Where can we get that at? Where can we get the merch? Yes, yes. If you got I a video clip, let me know. I'll drop that right yes. now. Yes. Um, I, they are in pre-sales right now. I'm I'm in the process of getting all my materials, but I dropped shirts, sunglasses, lighters, stickers, like these. Hey. Um, and I also have uh, two different kind of shirts from Balance and a CD okay. with ten songs on it. So through that, I you know I have to pay taxes on those, of course. But that's a way that I make the income. Um, you know, trying to get paid for shows, which has been like I said, difficult because I'm the one booking. Um, doing all the booking and although I've had a job as a booking agent for RuPaul's Drag Race oh, Drag shit. Queens oh, um, I did all their travel itineraries and stuff and had to negotiate with the venues Hold on what? I did that was one of my jobs it, it, that's how I met Cynthia mm-hmm. yeah it was a remote job I worked at industry let me, let me let me rewind here I worked at industry I was a bartender my bar manager was a booking agent for the Benedetti group I said listen this is what I'm trying to do um, so he got me a job as an agent and I would, I would book, I'm talking like Alyssa Edwards, yeah. Laganja, um, like all, all of them. So I was a travel agent until COVID hit cause obviously everything shut down. Um, but I would have to negotiate with venues and talk about pricing and mm-hmm. what they would pay for and all these things and look at the contracts. So I've done all these things, yeah. right. But having to come and say, hi, I'm Shannon Siona representing Shannon Siona, it's like, mm, it's hard. you're high risk. Yeah. Uh, you have no representation. How do we know you're going to make the money? How do we know you're going to sell out the venue? How do we know an audience is going to come make it? Um, so that it gets tricky there. It mm-hmm. does. It gets tricky because uh, I'm not signed and I, I don't have an agency. Uh, the ladies, you know, on Drag Race have the Drag Race as their, I tend, or as their uh, resume, really, you know. So that's been more is and it, I found it especially more difficult since COVID hit. Yeah. Um and I don't know if it's just because, you know, everybody has taken financial losses and they can't afford it or everybody's just kind of reprogramming and figuring out what the new normal is, but um yeah, that's definitely been an issue. Uh but it is just me uh doing everything, PR, marketing, advertisement, management, yeah. agency, and wallet and, it, and it's tough and, <laughs> and, and it's, then you still have to perform and, and you still I have, to, to, have to make to quality perform. music yeah write the music uh, come up with ideas and pay my rent yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah and yeah. take care of my animals and be a, a human and a partner and not go crazy <laughs> while doing all of this yeah I would de- I would definitely say that this year has been more men- mentally challenging than the past few years yeah. and I don't know if it's because we're coming out of COVID or just because maybe I'm I'm coming into a new stage of my career where I expect more. Yeah. Maybe that makes me complicated or, you know, too hard to work with. But it's just because I have the big goal in mind and performing you know in Austin want. is wonderful. But I'd like to I'd like to tour Europe. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'd like to travel to, I don't know, Ireland or Alaska or anywhere yeah. and have that be my day job. Man. That is the goal. I, yeah. I, the I goal. definitely I need uh, to. If anybody manages podcast PM, <laughs> yeah, yeah, for real, Damn. man. I, like, feel uh, your, <laughs> I feel your pain. I feel your pain. Yes, please. Um, <laughs> podcast and I don't know. I don't even know. And, and labels. Please head this way. TV yeah. networks. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Yeah, Let's Netflix, uh, sign me. Hey, hey, for, hey, for real. Uh, put me on your scores. Give us okay? a joke. <laughs> Thank you. For real. We um, who was who that? It was a few Austin artists that got placement on Netflix shows. Um, uh, uh, Lady no. Earth. Lady Ooh, Earth got. love uh, Lady Earth. Clover. Clover. She's so Certified. Sweet. They got an HBO show. I'm pretty mm-hmm. sure Tribe Mafia got oh, on yeah. one. Yeah, Tribe Mafia is on top of everything. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Yeah, I've mm. known those boys for a few years too. So, uh, and Lady Earth, love her too. I, I, my sexual, my sexuality, I live through her. Yeah, <laughs> for that. Yeah, um, I just let her take. That's yeah. I'm gonna just give it all to her. Mm-hmm. I just uh, yeah, and I, I just watch and I admire from the seat. <laughs> I feel you. I feel you. Uh, uh, let, let let's run on me, man. Uh, yeah, let's yeah. do it. Let's run on me. This is on me by Shannon Siona, streaming everywhere. Mm-hmm. Run that shit up, y'all. Run it up. Run it up. On that note, on that note, that was on me. <laughs> that was on me <laughs> by Shannon Siona. Yeah, it's my first sexual song. Go cop that merch. Go cop that merch. Where can they find that merch? Y'all can find that merch on my website, shannonsiona.com. dot mm-hmm. uh, Also, my Instagram. All of mm-hmm. my handles are just my name, Shannon Siona. Very easy, very accessible. Um, yeah, and 10% of every sale is going to a foundation called Greenpeace, which is an official climate action organization here in America. Well, they have it all over the world, but I'm, I'm sending it to the yeah. America one. Um, America. You know, as, as a, a reference to show that a huge part of my brand is environmental activism, all the shirts are made with recycled materials. Um, so I'm very present even in those aspects from buying the shirts from a specific wholesaler even though it costs me more money yeah. because they're made of recycled materials and not uh, fast fashion um you know one of my goals in life is to own a reservation and on and like take care of wildlife and plants that are going endangered be um so after i take my last bow on broadway i will move to my 10 20 acres of land and Take care of animals for the rest of my life. So, you heard it here first, folks. <laughs> when you listen to Sh- when you listen to Shannon, you listen to Mother Earth. That's right. <laughs> listen to Shannon. Help the Earth. <laughs> Thank you. New slogan. <laughs> All right. I'm about to hire you as my PR guy. That's hey, I'm with it. <laughs> hey, let me quit my job. Right? <laughs> hey, for real though. You never know. You never hey, know. Hey, I'm about to start making commercials for everybody. So hey, stay tuned, there you y'all. Go. Ever let's go half on half. <laughs> Have you uh, have you ever thought about moving out of Texas? Of course. Yeah. Just say, just say, where, where would you go? When I was younger, I thought New York. I maybe I'd still love like to live in New York. Maybe just not in the city. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, the outskirts. My my partner would love to move to Florida. Um, okay. I, which I love the trees and stuff, but Florida crazy. Yeah. They're crazy. Florida the animals man. crazy. Yeah, the people man. crazy. My girlfriend wants to move to. Florida too, it's so just crazy. But, <laughs> I understand, <laughs> but um, LA is crazy too. I I don't think I could ever live in LA though. I just am, no matter how much money I make, if it's my off day, baby, I'm I'm yeah. being sweats. I'm gonna be in sweats and my favorite t shirt and my hair's gonna be. Yes, I do look this crusty. Like you want to take that picture, you ain't gonna make any money. But I'm gonna still look this way. Yeah. Um, so I don't think I'd last very long in LA. They'd get old, tired of me really quickly. Um, I don't know. For some reason, I've really wanted to try Canada. Mm. They seem like very nice people, and they have free health care. They yeah. um, do. <laughs> Literally <laughs> everywhere know. else except the U.S. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm really obsessed with sex education at the moment on Netflix, so I, I wouldn't mind seeing what's up with the U.K. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I don't have a specific place. I just know somewhere with huge trees mm. and tropical. Okay. Uh, I loved – I. Uh, Okay, I love H-E-B. Uh, Texas is cool, but mm-hmm. the hill country, that's boring. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I say that every time I go uh, Here? on vacay. No. <laughs> <laughs> every time I go on vacay, like I just, um, uh, I was in San Francisco. Mm. Um, and I'm just like looking around. I'm just like, fuck. Man, like this is what they get to see every, every day. day. Yeah. yeah, I'm like, oh my god, but going but down those cost? hills, oh. yeah, <laughs> at what cost? And those hills, oh, oh my god, those hills downtown. Dude, no, I would move to New Orleans. I love you New would? Orleans. I love New even Orleans. with the floods, hurricanes, the hurricanes. <sighs> yeah. Okay, I would move out those times. Dude, <laughs> hurricanes. No, I'd dude. move out. <laughs> Whenever I heard that the coffins were floating because they built, oh. they built them mm-hmm. on. No, you mm-hmm. missed me with mm-hmm. all of that, baby. No, no, no. You no. just want to drink in the street. That's all you want. Right. <laughs> I love the culture. I love New Orleans. We, I, I I generally love New Orleans, like the culture, the music, the food, everything. Yeah. The about music it, you know? and the food is yeah. I did. I I want 20... a New Orleans funeral when I die. <laughs> Damn. I really do. Like Damn. I, I want to party down okay. the block. Okay, okay. I okay. see you. I partied for my birthday in New Orleans, 2020. I'm surprised I didn't catch COVID. Yeah. <laughs> honestly, but I, I I couldn't live there. Like yeah. the people, a lot of people told me that. Um, 
Number you know, if you live for... here for too long, yeah, you you become homeless because everybody just oh, drinks yeah. all the time. Just drinks all the it's time. It's also it's also like neck and neck with Chicago with the number one mur- mm. murder capital yeah. of the world yeah. too. So yeah. that's kind of like. Too. A, yeah. <laughs> I'm not trying to move anywhere and have more chaos. Exactly. <laughs> I, exactly. I, I, and I really wanted to move to Greece until they kicked all the black people out. Oh, uh, <laughs> now I'm nervous. Yeah, wow. Yeah. That yeah. happened. I was, I was wanting to go to yeah, Greece, so they never mind. pushed them to sea. Mm, mm. And Sweden? I can swim a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not all that. <laughs> not I all like that. to go to Sweden. Oh, Sweden? That'd be okay. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Performing anywhere that's not America, I just feel like America is the hood with the Gucci belt. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yep. just you know? fake it till you make it. We, about we to go never broke. make it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I Government saw that. already yeah. said we're broke. I saw that. They were like, what was it? Like Thursday, right? Yeah. We're supposed to run out of money. Like that's why they're trying to take yeah. money from Cash App now. <laughs> right. Damn, oh, damn. It's a conspiracy. Yeah. Everything's a conspiracy. I, <laughs> Stop asking me for my taxes. It's too much. It's too much. I don't know. I've seen a lot of actors and, and musicians come out of Canada and. I don't know. I just kind of feel like I could have a fighting chance there, mm-hmm. maybe acting wise. I don't know. I'll, t- I'll tell you for uh, um, for your sound, I'd go to like Philly. That's where my older brother was born, and I honestly have never been. I feel like it'd be very competitive, no? Now, uh, it would, right? But, but Philly, Philly appreciates, yeah. uh, you know, that sound. You know what I mean? That that whole um, even. Mm, so you're gonna book a show? For us, hey, 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 hey. there you go. Hey, <laughs> there because I don't know Philly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I don't no. know it. Hey, uh, so, so Philly, of course, you know all the the soul singers that were born there. Joe Scott, mm-hmm. you know the list goes on. But like, um, it, 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 I don't know. I just feel like they appreciate like soul music a little bit yeah. more than probably like any other state. To be honest, yeah. to me, um, I yeah. definitely. I still want to go to Detroit and Chicago. Mm-hmm. You know, just to I was I wanted to go for my birthday just. I know it's not a big deal to other people, but to be able to walk into Motown Records would just be, um, like the the time like what is that called the time zone? What is it? Yeah, what is the, the Twilight, Twilight Zone? The Twilight, Twilight Zone. zone. <laughs> the Twilight Zone. It would be like a Twilight Zone moment for me, um, because I watched like the Temptations movie growing up mm-hmm. and the, the Jacksons movie growing up, and gosh, it just means it's so near and dear to my soul. I feel like, yep. um. So I would love to go in and see that and experience that. But I don't know about living there, man. That's yeah. It's really mm. intense. I just want peace. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I just want peace mm. um, I'm on, in my home life. It, traveling is cool, but I don't know about staying there. Yeah. 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 So do you plan on uh, releasing any other music to close out the year? Or like, I know you just, you know, you, you recently dropped out <sighs> me. Um, what's the plans for, like, music-wise, like, the rest of the year? Mm. Up in the air still. I don't know. Okay. I I created um, a Christmas song last year with Tita. Mm-hmm. It was called Trap Santa, um, which was fun. But I don't know. I think as hard as I've worked, maybe not on the forefront performance side, but the business side, I think I am just going to close the year out with On Me um, and start fresh next year with three singles before I drop my EP. The reason for that is because... I don't want to sh- stress myself out <laughs> for yeah. the sake of putting stuff out. Um, and the way that I want to put these next few projects out, I I just straight up just don't have the budget for it right now. Um, so just putting it on streaming sites isn't enough for me. Um, I I dropped On Me with the music video. That's something that I'd like to continue to do in the future, drop the song and the video on you know the same day. Same that is a lot of background work. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. People don't see that, but but it is. Um, and, and same with, and same with when dropping that, you know, I want to have shows lined up so that I could perform that new music and, and I'll be having new merch rolling out with that as well. So it's all collective. It's all a collect, um, you know, everything that I drop. So I think I'm just going to take a break this holiday season and kind of refocus, regroup and remind myself of what's important and why I started doing this in the first place. Um, cause I think I lost a lot of that this year. Yeah. I also want to write new music. Uh, the songs that are going to be coming out, I wrote during quarantine. We're not in that anymore. I wrote a lot of them when I was single. I'm not single anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, like on me, I wrote when I was in the streets, yeah. right? Um, <laughs> that is not relevant today. <laughs> so, uh, I like to keep up current with what's current in my life. And until that happens, you know, I think I have a good enough repertoire. I have about 16, 17 songs that people can listen to until then. Okay, okay. 
That sounds like a plan to me. Yeah. You know, sometimes you, to sometimes you got to take a step back and just like reset, you reboot. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to do the things the correct way. So, right. You know. hone, hone down who my audience is. Exactly. You know, and what what the pi- big picture is going to look like for this next DP and eventually a debut album. Yeah. Okay. I, st- I still want to do a uh, a holiday themed <laughs> show, so hopefully Ooh. we can bring you back bring for back. Uh, to bring Austin me back. for that. Bring me Antita, because because hey. Trap Santa only got maybe like two weeks of show time. Okay, you know, and then it was Christmas because I chose on like December first. I wanted to do a Christmas song, so mm. I don't know. Maybe maybe I'll make a music video for Trap Santa. I. I don't know. Yeah. I I'd, I'd love to say that I'm going to be taking a break, but the Capricorn in me is like, <laughs> girl, you wish, <laughs> you think, but it's not going to happen. Yeah. So I don't know. Maybe. Maybe we'll do a music video, have us back on. We could perform Trap Santa live. Hey, that'll be uh, dope. We've never performed it live, so that would be that would be fun. It's uh, it's the Nutcracker beat, mm-hmm. but it's like a trap. Yeah, trap in it. Yeah. yeah. How did y'all link, how did y'all link up? Uh, I DM'd him. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. I... I decided I wanted to do a Christmas song, and um, I was just going through beats. That that was my process, like going through beats on YouTube and then going on to Beat Stars. And I found this beat, and I was like, "Damn, a rapper would be sound badass on this." And I had just worked with King Savage, and so I kind of wanted to end end the year on that same note of rapper. So I just wrote Tita and asked if he would be down for it, and he was down. He we finished that song maybe in a week. Um, it was very quick. And I, I mean, it was a bop. We, we took the cover. The our first time meeting was for the cover art. It was a photo, <laughs> photo shoot. shoot. Oh, yeah, wow. that was the first time we had met. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's the last time I've seen him. <laughs> so, <laughs> but I'm thankful that he, he he did. You know, did the song with me. I I still jam out to it, and it's gonna be on my Christmas playlist right after all I want for Christmas is you for yeah, show. You push it every single year, like Mariah Carey. That's right. For, for, that's right. For, for just that one. Yeah, just <laughs> that's all y'all get from me. Just that one. Yeah, yeah. Trap Santa. <laughs> it's not. You know. Uh, because that was hard. Writing a Christmas song is hard, yeah, especially because imagine. there are so many classics and, like, you don't want to sound freaking basic exactly, and, exactly. or sing about freaking how you want somebody as the Christmas gift, yeah. you know? <laughs> trying to be creative about that is hard. Yeah, <laughs> it yeah. is. Man, we got to um, we gotta, we gotta, we gotta have Trap Santa as the outro. We gotta, Damn. We, we gotta, Thank we, you, Christmas <laughs> in October. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> Hey. That's okay. You know what? I say do it because it's a jam. Yeah. It's a jam. Sure. For sure, sure, man. Um how you feel, Mario? I feel great. I appreciate you for coming for, Thank for you. you guys taking the time out to yeah. come out here. Thank Anytime you that somebody for comes for out and sits down with us, uh I'm always grateful. Yeah, we for doing this because hit a lot of subjects. It is it's been a very <laughs> fun episode, so I appreciate you yes, so much. Yes, thank you. Um you want to give out your socials one more time and yes. let everybody know where to stream your music? Oh, Hello. Um, <laughs> it's just Shannon Siona. My name, S-I-O-N-N-A is my last name. And Shannon, pretty pretty straightforward. Um, you can get my merchandise on my website, shannonsiona.com. Uh, 10% will be going to a climate action organization. So y'all help the planet help me and support your independent artists. For sure. Well, now that we're closer to the end, I would like to close off on a positive note. So, would you like to kick off the positive note? Or would you like us to do the Yeah, honors? you do it. Lead by example. <laughs> Mr. Nick, would you like me to go? Yeah, I always go first. You go first. <laughs> I got you. Hey, Mario I always got you. Give, gives the, the best positive thoughts. All right, let's I'm hear. very negative today, okay? I got pulled <laughs> yeah. over. Not to get pulled over. Right. I had car trouble. <laughs> Oh, let me think. Let me think. Don't uh, let your dreams die like my car did <laughs> today. <laughs> she beat you. She beat me to it. That was a bar. So, uh, keep on, <laughs> keep on chugging. Yeah. Um, keep on chugging. Let me see. Let me see. I already gave out one year. Damn it! This is a downfall of recording consistently. Like you have yeah. to come up with shit last minute so quick. Um, let me I, see. I, I, I got. I'll, I'll go before you. you go, go, go. Um, One of these days, I'll go first. I know, no, it's all good. <laughs> uh, uh, consistent hard work, right? Um, putting time and just effort into your craft consistently can can take you far. Uh, and I use that because of us, right? Like, um, like you said, kind of earlier in the interview, we've had back to back interviews, back to back. And you know, he ha- he has a child. I have children. We both have separate lives outside of this, and. Uh, it's just really good to kind of see, you know, uh, where where we've grown, uh, where it's grown since I've joined, you know, since we've added people. 
Uh, and to be honest, I don't think we'd be here without the consistent hard work, man. <laughs> so it's my positive. Beautiful, note. beautiful. You I love it. Me? I'll try. Um, That's nice. I'm going to take this positive note to take a moment and uh, acknowledge and give flowers to my co-host, Nick, because he is an amazing oh, interviewer, on, journalist, do co-host. He, do, he takes a load off of me. Pause. Um, <laughs> Super pause. Whoa. Whoa. He, he, he does an amazing job. He is very on point, smart, does his research. Uh, he picks up where I, where I slack off a lot, so... Uh, and I'm glad that I, a lot of people do catch on and acknowledge the same because you deserve it. Mm. Oh, man. Aww. That's so nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's nice. I'm crying. I'm crying. <laughs> um, I would say I would have to give my positive note to my hubby. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah. He always showers me with love, keeps me grounded, keeps me mentally present. I am not a very easy human. Um especially with a dream like this. It's kind of life or death. It feels that way sometimes. Yeah. So to have a, a grounding partner and keeps my home life stable and keeps the house clean and takes care of hey. the pets. And, you know, if even on my worst day, I can still think of him and know that my life is good. Shout so out. Shout out, partner shout out to Sean. For real. Um, the love of my life, yeah. Hey, He's all embarrassed. Look at, look at him blushing. <laughs> yeah, every, everybody stare at him and just. Stare. Yeah, mm. just, look, just <laughs> shout out supportive partners that support yeah. us and our yeah. dreams. Because mm-hmm. without them, we would not be here. This is a not and very easy or stable industry to support. So, man, in no way, shape, or form. So. Shout out to Saws. Shout Thank out, you for. Shout out to my woman, man. Y'all mm. got me all emotional. Oh, emotional. <laughs> Yeah, and we are lucky. We are <laughs> yes, blessed. For yes. sure, for sure. Well, man. You wanna, All right. You well, until it. next time, this is Trap Santa. Y'all have me back. Um, I'll just do the outro. I got you. Oh, yeah. yeah. Right. Love, get, like, um, love, peace, and booty grease. Don't forget the booty grease because I don't have any on me, and I ain't getting any in because shipments are backed up. So talk to Jesus, not me. All right? <laughs> Here's Trap Santa. <laughs> this has been another amazing episode. I don't know. That's perfect. I'm Mario from Southside. Neighborhood Nick, man. Shannon Siona. <laughs> 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 <laughs>